Hello dear students, welcome to Dr. Espinayak Medici classes. Uh, in today's class, let us try to learn about chloramphenicol and this is the basic structure of chloramphenicol. So chloramphenicol is a broad spectrum antibiotic which is very effective on gram positive, gram negative. It is also effective on uh, anaerobes, aerobes and it is also effective on some of the parasites. So even then it is having major antibacterial property, it is not clinically used because of its adverse drug reactions and it is having a very severe adverse drug reaction and that is bone marrow suppression. So because of that lethal adverse drug reaction, we don't use uh, chloramphenicol most commonly. Okay? Even then, even having the same ADR, we also use these uh, antibiotic in some cases, but we'll see about that in detail. So uh, let us discuss about chloramphenicol in detail. Actually, chloramphenicol is an antibiotic which is usually obtained from Streptomyces venezuela. So, Streptomyces venezuela is a bacteria and from bacteria it is usually obtained. And remember, the antibiotics which are synthesized from other microorganisms, they will have high hypersensitive actions. Okay. So, because of this, uh, chloramphenicol will have hypersensitive reactions. Anyways, like penicillin and cephalosporins. This is also obtained from other other organisms. That they are that is the reason they will have some hypersensitive reactions. And uh, yeah, let's see about mechanism of chloramphenicol. Its mechanism is same like tetracyclines. So if you want to know about tetracyclines, I have just made my video. So you can see in the description. You can learn about tetracyclines. I have provided my link in the description. So chloramphenicol. Usually it binds the 50s ribosome of the susceptible bacteria and by binding the 50s ribosome it inhibits the synthesis of protein. So it inhibits protein synthesis and by that it shows bacteriostatic property. Bacteriostatic. So it, it stops the growth of bacteria and that means it stops the multiplication of bacteria. That is the reason we call them as bacteriostatic. And in some cases, in higher doses, the same chloramphenicol will also have bacteriocidal property. In normal doses, it will act like bacteriostatic agent and in higher doses, it acts like a bacteriocidal agent. So this is the uh, mode of action of chloramphenicol and uh, see while talking about chloramphenicol, remember guys, we have to focus mainly on pharmacokinetics and adverse drug reactions of chloramphenicol. So let us see the pharmacokinetics. So actually flor uh, chloramphenicol is formulated in the oral form, IV form and it is also formulated on the topical form. So it is very much absorbed through GA tract. It is metabolized in the liver by gluconoride conjugation and the metabolic end products are excreted through urine. And it is very well distributed in the all the tissues. It crosses placenta, it crosses blood brain barrier and it is secreted even in the milk. So it is secreted in the milk also. So uh, the mothers who has babies in those patients, we should contraindicate chloramphenicol because it excretes through uh, milk also. So this is the kinetics of chloramphenicol. And uh, yeah, uh, we have to focus on adverse drug reactions and chloramphenicol has four different adverse drug reactions. Uh, anyways, I'm telling that the antibiotics which are synthesized from other microorganisms will have hypersensitive reactions. So hypersensitivity is the first one, first adverse drug reaction. And uh, bone marrow depression is the very important adverse drug reactions. So chloramphenicol depresses the bone. Bone, uh, bone marrow depression is another adverse drug reaction. So uh, bone marrow depression causes severe anemia in the patient and it is characterized by leukocytopenia and thrombocytopenia. So all the uh, white blood cells and platelets uh, concentration decreases in the patient and patient will have high risk of infections. So this is very important adverse drug reaction. So bone marrow depression is the major ADR. So because of this, we don't use chloramphenicol systemically in the patients, in the hospitals. Okay. So this is very important. And GA related adverse drugs are very common, nausea, vomiting and chronic use of chloramphenicol will disrupt the gastric flora and by that it has some GA related disorders. And <clears throat> grey baby syndrome is very important term you should learn about 
chloramphenicol so chloramphenicol when it is given in the children in the small people in the uh, infants this will disrupt the normal functioning in the children and uh, the skin of the people uh, of the children becomes gray color so that is the reason it is called gray baby syndrome and gray baby syndrome is usually characterized by uh, disrupted uh, circulations and nausea vomiting is commonly seen in uh, gray baby syndrome so, and systemic actions were also seen in gray baby syndrome so that these are the four different adverse drug reactions of chloramphenicol and remember guys chloramphenicol uses so previously we were we used chloramphenicol for typhoid but nowadays for typhoid we have third generation cephalosporins and uh, ceftriaxone is the drug of choice for typhoid and nowadays we don't use chloramphenicol for type typhoid and uh, yeah uh, as i told you in the kinetics chloramphenicol is very well absorbed and distributed all the tissues it is also concentrated in cerebrospinal fluid because it crosses blood brain barrier and in meningitis we can use chloramphenicol but the doses should be monitored and all these adrs should be keenly monitored while using chloramphenicol so in uh, bacterial meningitis we can use chloramphenicol anyways uh, for bacterial infections bacterial meningitis we have many other drugs like penicillins and cephalosporins which are very effective and uh, we have fluoroquinolones also and in anaerobic infections this chloramphenicol is very effective and it is a drug of choice in rickets rickettsial infections and remember guys this is very very important about chloramphenicol chloramphenicol is not orally and systemic systemically it is not used because it is having many lethal adverse drug reactions and this chloramphenicol is mainly used in the eye infections and ear infections because chloramphenicol is also formulated topical administrations so topically it is very well uh, effective on bacterial conjunctivitis and in the uh, ear infections so otitis media topically we can give chloramphenicol so this is the major use of the chloramphenicol so uh, this is the major one and uh, yeah this is about chloramphenicol and let me summarize uh, the chloramphenicol chloramphenicol is broad spectrum antibiotic and uh, it is very effective on almost all the bacteria uh, even then it is very effective it is not used uh, in the hospitals because of its lethal adverse drug reactions like uh, bone marrow suppression and gray baby syndrome so because of two two adrs we don't use chloramphenicol effectively in the hospitals but it is very commonly used for ear and eye infections topically so this is about chloramphenicol and listen guys if you learned something from this video please don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends and please keep watching my videos uh, thank you for watching